what we're going to be looking at now is how to calculate the cutoff frequency for a filter. Um, now, in order to be able to do that, we just need to have a bit of a look at the, the characteristics of a filter circuit. Um, so remembering how we were describing them, um, I'm going to use a low pass filter for most of these, but it's actually the same principle for a high pass filter. Um, so when we are drawing the frequency response of a filter, for a low pass filter it would look something like this, where low frequencies get passed through and high frequencies get attenuated. Okay, and I'm going just for the sake of argument to use voltage instead of amplitude because they mean the same thing um, in, in terms of what we're looking at on the oscilloscopes. Okay, so if I had an output, uh, had a filter and I had one volt peak to peak, then at low frequencies, my low pass filter is going to be, the output is going to be pretty much one volt. But then after a while, it's going to start to drop off. And so at higher frequencies, it's going to drop off towards zero volts. Okay? Now, in order to calculate um, what we call the cutoff frequency, we need to work out what the definition is. Okay? So, the, the definition of a cutoff is when the output voltage is 0.707 .707 of the input voltage. So, if we had one volt peak to peak, on the input, at the cutoff frequency, the output voltage would be 0.707 volts, or approximately 0.7 volts. Okay, and so if I cut that down um, on my graph here, that would be my cutoff frequency. Now, why 0.707? Okay. Now, if you remember the formulas for the power. That's the one there. Okay, that's one of the three formulas we can use for power. If I just had a resistive load on the output, so my multimeter or my oscilloscope would behave just like a, a well, large resistance, but a resistive load nonetheless, then um, then this is the resistance we've got. We've got the voltage, so I can calculate the actual output power of our filter. And what we're trying to find is where the output power. is equal to one half of the input power. Okay? And so in order to do that, we were basically we were trying to find the voltage if that was one and well if everything was one, so if the input voltage was one volt peak to peak or one volt RMS um, and the output volt the, the resistance was one ohm then we would have one watt of power being used. One squared divided by one is just one. Okay? And if we were to look at, at the cutoff frequency, the output power would only be a half of a watt, 0.5 watts. And in order to have that with the same resistor, um, to have the power as a half, this power here would be 0.707. Okay? So basically 0.707. So V out 0.707 of the V in, um, which is really 1 over the square root of 2 times V in. Okay? The square root of 2, or well, the square root of a half, because we've got a square there, so if we transpose it, it will work out to be the square root of a half. Okay? So, um, so that's sort of where this 0.707 comes from. It wasn't just plucked out of nowhere. It was due to the fact that the output power at the cutoff frequency is half of the input power. And so in order, if all of the resistances were the same, so the output resistance was the same as the input, then the output voltage must be 0.707 of the input voltage in order for that to happen. Um, so in order to calculate it using the components, so for a low pass filter, you're going to have uh, a circuit that looks something like this.
Okay, so we have a, a resistor and a capacitor, and the output voltage, well, the resistor and the capacitor form a voltage divider, with the output voltage just being across the capacitor. And remembering that the capacitor is going to behave a bit like a resistor, it's going to oppose some current depending on the frequency. So we call that reactance. Okay, and so it's going to have an equivalent XC which is the capacitive reactance of that resistor. Okay? And if we were to have um, an output power that was half of the input power, we find that, so at FCO, the cutoff frequency, we find that XC is equal to the, the resistance. Okay? So this resistance here, is equal to this capacitive reactance at the cutoff frequency. Okay. Um, we would find though that the voltage across this capacitor is 0.707 of this input voltage, which kind of doesn't help, does it? Right? Remember earlier we were saying that okay, if that resistance there was equal to this resistance, well you'd expect this output voltage to be half, wouldn't you? It's a voltage divider, okay? But there's a little thing that's slightly different with the reactants, and that we haven't taken into account with the fact that it's a half, that it's 0.707 of the voltage, and that's the fact that this um, reactant has a phase delay, or adds a delay to the, um, the sinusoid. So instantaneously, the voltage across these two um, resistors or the resistor and the capacitor would add up to be the, the voltage in. But when we're talking about peak to peak voltage or RMS voltage, we're only talking about the effectively the average voltage overall, not the instantaneous voltage. And so what we see is we're having a phase delay here. You may have seen that when you do your experiments. So I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. But for now, what we need to understand is that the at the cutoff frequency, the reactance is equal to the resistance. Okay? So XC is equal to 1 over 2 pi FC. Okay? And so if the reactance is equal to the resistance, then we can find F cutoff is equal to 1 over 2 pi RC. Okay? So that would be my cutoff frequency. Okay, so I can. So R equals XC equals 1 over 2 pi times the cutoff frequency times the capacitance. Transpose that around a little bit, I get the cutoff frequency. I can calculate by using 1 over 2 pi times R times C. Okay, so let's do an example question based on this. If R equals 10K and C equals 120 nanofarads. Okay. So find the cutoff frequency if R is 10K and the capacitance is 120 nanofarads. So all I've put in it's 1 over 2 pi times 10K times 120 N. Okay, so, then my calculator, in and I get 132, or close to 133. So it's approximately 133 hertz. Okay, so if I had a filter made of a 10K resistor and a 120 nanofarad capacitor, it would have a cutoff frequency of 133 hertz. Now, interestingly, it doesn't. This is the same regardless of whether it's a high pass or a low pass. So, if I were to have a filter that was a low pass, it would have a cutoff frequency. So that's my cutoff frequency there of 133 hertz. And if I had a high pass filter made from the same components, it would look the. It would have the same cutoff frequency, but it would. And it just looks like it's been mirrored, okay? 
Okay, so it had the same cutoff frequency, so the output voltage would be the same at that frequency, but just uh, the response would be different for different frequencies. Right? And so, if, uh, as you may have discovered when you were doing your experiments where you uh, checked the two filters and plotted them, you might have seen that you get one that looks like this and the other looks like this, and when they crossed over, happened to be at around about 0.707 of the input voltage, approximately. Okay? And the cutoff frequency for yours, which was about 1600 hertz, I think, was about the same for each one. Okay? And so um, it doesn't actually matter whether it's a high pass or a low pass, you can calculate the cutoff frequency exactly the same way by simply putting in these values in the capacitance. Okay. Now quite often what we need to do when we're doing filter design is we, we need to um, find what capacitance, what resistance to use to achieve a cutoff frequency at a certain frequency. Okay, so let's have a look at another example where we're going to do that. We need a filter. Let's make it actually, we need a uh, low pass filter with a cutoff of 4 kilohertz. Okay. So, remember the formula, FCO equals 1 over 2 pi times R times C. Now, what I can do, I've actually got to make a choice there for two different components. And so, I can't really solve the two, but I can solve for the R times C by just picking a resistance and identifying capacitance. Or picking a capacitance and identifying what resistance. Okay? So um, quite often it's easier to just choose a capacitance because um, you don't want to make it too big or too small. So if you get, let's say, let's choose a 10 N capacitor. Okay, so if I choose a 10 N capacitor, now I can find R. Okay. So transposing a little bit, I'm going to have R equals 1 over 2 pi times my cutoff frequency, so 4000 times 10 in. Now I just chose 10 in randomly because I know it's a smallish capacitor, probably work, and I can tweak it after. So if I find that I need like a 100 meg ohm resistor or something, well, that's not going to work. So I can I can tweak the value by just if I divide it by 100, I multiply by 100. So now I can just substitute this in. Two, two I get 3,978. Okay, so so approximately 4k ohm resistor would work. Okay, and that's the reasonable resistance. So 10 in and a 4k resistor. I can't actually you get a 4k resistor, but I'll probably use uh, two in series that make up 4k or close enough to it. Okay. Um, so I can find a, a resistance needed to make a filter with a set certain color frequency by just picking a capacitance and then calculating from that. Okay. Now, if I wanted to. I could tweak these values because what I really need to find is the R times the C. So if I find a, if I use a 12 NF capacitor, I can use one of those. That's going to decrease this one by a little bit, maybe three. If it decreases by the right amount, I can get to close to the E12 resistors and capacitors that we need to use. Okay. So for practical design, you might need to tweak these values just a little bit. So I made a guess there. It gave me a, a solution that is realistic, but I actually can't find a 4K resistor in my um, at my in my set. But I might have a 3,300K resistor, so I can use that if I use a slightly bigger capacitor. So I could probably choose a a um, 12 NF or a 15 NF capacitor 
and which will decrease this, and it might decrease it to the point where I can get close to E12 values for both of them. Right? So practically, you might need to do that, but um, for the most part, it's just using the same formula to calculate. Right? Um, okay. Now, the reason why the output voltage is 0.707 across that capacitance, even though the, um, the resistance, the, the reactants of both is the same, and so why it's not half, is because we have a waveform that looks something like this. So if my V in looked like this, okay, my output voltage would look like this. Point here, um, if my capacitor's voltage was that, I've got no current flowing into it because the input voltage is zero at this instant, and so the capacitor's voltage is not going to be changing. So the the slope of this the tangent line to that to the capacitor's voltage there is going to be zero. Okay, but as I increase this voltage on the bay, on the um, input here, it's going to mean that the input voltage is going to be increasing the most at this point here. Okay. And so at this point here, it's the steepest. Okay? And again, we're now we're still charging the capacitor up, so it's going to keep increasing the voltage across the capacitor. But at this point here, the voltage is back to zero again. And so we are back to a flat line. Okay? But now the input is below, so we're actually not charging the capacitor up anymore. We're actually discharging it. And so the voltage across the capacitor is going to start to drop, and it's going to drop as the um, as the voltage gets more and more negative. It's going to drop faster and faster. So at this point here, it's got to it's going to be drop changing the most, but in the opposite direction. So changing, decreasing the fastest. But now we're back up to zero again, and so it's not going to de discharge anymore. It's now going to start to charge back again because we've got a positive here. Okay, so these are the positive parts, negative is positive. Okay, and so the slope of my capacitors charging over time is going to be positive for where the actual supply voltage is positive, but then it's going to start to discharge when the supply voltage is negative, or the input voltage is negative. Okay, and so um, that's the why we have um, the capacitor's voltage is not in phase with the supply voltage or the input voltage. Okay? If we don't, the resistor's voltage would be proportional to this one because the resistor's voltage is simply just how much current is flowing through the circuit. And so the resistor's voltage would look the same as this, smaller. And the sum of these two voltages will always add up to this voltage here. Okay? And at the cutoff frequency, the peak to peak voltage of this one, so the peak to peak is only going to be 0.707 of the peak to peak voltage of my supply or my input. Okay? So at the cutoff frequency, if this was 1 volt peak to peak, this would only be 0.707 volts peak to peak. But the instantaneous voltage would still add up to the, um, the input voltage. Okay.